I, I wasn't able to really listen to anyone or get along with anyone. So I made a lot of choices that I was going to go and be on my own, whether it meant sleeping on the street or at a friend's or anything else. I was going to turn away help because I didn't want to follow guidelines. Now, did you deal with any homelessness? Yes. How long? Uh, the first time was about three months. The second time was six months. And the third time was nine months. All, all here in Redwood City? Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, I mean, you were actually homeless. You weren't couch, uh, couch surfing. You were actually on the street? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for a while, I, I was with a group of people that were also homeless, but we all kind of looked out for each other. And uh, we used to sleep in tents under the bridge in front of Toys R Us when it was still there. Mm. And did that for a couple months. And What year was this? Uh, 2012, 2013. Oh, I'm surprised I didn't run into you. I wonder if I did run into you and I just didn't realize it. Yeah, you might have. Because I was doing outreach at that time. Yeah. That's I, interesting. It, it definitely might have happened. I, I used to hang out with that group around uh, the square downtown at Sequoia Station, mostly. And then... Um, That's a real... You know, that actually is a trip. I, I, You and I have definitely have crossed each other's paths. I just don't... It just... I don't remember it. Yeah. Well, that, that was when I first started hearing about street life. So were you... Really quick, I... I so were you hanging out with that group of folks that with that when the incident happened downtown where the guy got stabbed for a cigarette? Uh, I knew him. You know him. I knew I knew the guy that got stabbed and died, and I knew the guy that stabbed him. And yeah. actually, the guy that died was a brother of a close friend of my kid's mother. So I know that family too. Yeah, yeah, that was really tragic. So, I know that caused a lot of problems. I, I mm-hmm. one for especially for one gentleman. In particular, who's been, he's he's. I think he's clean and sober right now, but he's really struggled with that because mm-hmm. of the fact that he he took the whole situation on his own shoulders. Yeah, you know, because he said he should have been there, and I mean, it's just it was a horrible situation. Yeah, I, so. had, I had actually left that exact situation about fifteen minutes before it happened. Wow. I was wow. I was there with a couple other people, and yeah. we could tell things were getting heated and not going well, and something was going to go down pretty quick. And uh, I, all over a cigarette. Yeah, yeah. All over a cigarette. I heard. Yeah. And I, and being a part of that group down there and knowing how everything went when people say that, I it sounds really callous, but I've seen situations like that over cigarettes hundreds of times. Oh, you know, Absolutely I've seen hundreds. I've seen stuff over shopping carts. It, yeah. That I mean, literally, people don't realize it. Like, you know, like the way I would almost defend my home. I've seen people defend their shopping carts, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it, yeah, I, I get any, it, and it spirals out of control quick. Very quick. You know? and especially when there's other influences like drugs, alcohol, other people, because, you know, if, if you have someone behind you saying, yeah, do it, do it. Most yeah. of the time it, it'll put that wind in your sails to push you forward. Right. And that's, that's when the, the worst of the worst can happen. Right. And especially not thinking about things, being impulsive. I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of my decisions and mistakes were because of impulse. Right. It wasn't thinking about long term. It was thinking about short term. Right now, what do I want? How am I going to get it? And not thinking about long term consequences. Right. Well, that doesn't enter the the equation. No. Right. It's just a. No. It's a sad. It's a gratif- It's instant gratification. And nobody mm-hmm. thinks about like, okay, could this land me in jail for a long time? Right. right. And and so even being a part of that situation or not a part of it, but being there when it was starting, knowing now that it was basically God picking me up and saying, you need to move because this could go against you. This could go against people that you're close to. You could be a part of this. You could end up in jail. And I, it was maybe 15 minutes after I had left that that happened. Right. And I didn't even hear about it until the next day. 